Sarah Ooh. Ruth Lay Doyle. My parents were Alvin and Mabel Lay, Mabel Beard Lay, and I had one sister, Say it, Frank. And of course, we were raised on a farm. We lived on 19 for a while, and then circumstances caused us to have to move, so we moved up the road on another farm. We stayed there for a while, and then we moved again to another farm that we call the Coma Place, and we lived there for a while. We lived there until we built the house in Nutbush, but we lived in the Coleman Place for a while. And, and it was when we moved to, 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 to Nutbush, to uh, my grandfather's farm, It was in the early 40s, because I was married then and had uh, two children when we moved there. And I was living on my own in uh, Humboldt, Tennessee. What was your profession? Where'd you go to school? Well, I went to the Haver County training school in Brownsville, Tennessee. Then uh, I went to Booker T. Washington for three years and Lemoyne College, graduating from Lane College in the, in the um, early 50s. And early, the middle 50s, we moved uh, with my children, husband and children. We moved to Joliet, Illinois. Well, who did you stay with in Memphis uh, when you were going to Booker T? Well, when I was going to Booker T, Washington, I lived with uh, my aunt Ruth Nesbitt, my mother's sister. Tell me about her. Well, she was uh, married to a Pullman porter at that time, Tom Nesbitt. And they had a nice home on Walker Avenue. And uh, of course it was used as a host house because at that time they didn't have, they didn't uh, allow the blacks to check in the hotels. So all the black prominent people that came to Memphis would always stay with her. They would uh, stay with her during, during uh, the time that they had to be in Memphis for business or whatever. And. Uh, including A. Philip Randolph and other prominent figures at that time. And um, we, um, well, I, I, I lived with her until my mother got sick back in Brownsville and I had to come home for the last year of my high school, causing me to graduate from my Hayward, Hayward Training School in Brownsville. Where did you stay when you went to school in Brownsville? Well, I lived different places. That time you boarded out. You boarded with different different places. I, I lived with Dr. Irvin and uh, Miss Louise and Dr. Irvin and I lived with uh, Miss Anna Green and I lived with Miss Williams, a lady named Miss Williams, but oh. that time at that time, the parents would board their children out. How old were you around oh, the year? I, I started boarding out, really, when I was in the third grade. But when I was in high school, I was a teenager, and now uh, I boarded, I boarded out. We boarded in, we lived in town during the school session. And now uh, when school, school was out, we'd go back on the farm. We'd go back home. No. So how old did you say you were when you were staying in Brownsville going to, you well, first I, started staying on I your own? I was about 16 years old when I graduated from high school. 
But when you were stand, when you went to Haywood train, training when school. When I went I, in the third grade, when I went in third grade, I was like eight, eight or nine years old. And you were staying by yourself on your own. Well, I was staying with teenage relatives. Uh, they were supposed to be taking care of me. Did they take care of you? Not too well. <laughs> Tell me that all about that. What happened? Well, and the, the, you just you you stay. You might you might get a bath once a week, and and uh, or you might not get one then. And uh, the food, they didn't know how to cook. They were supposed to cook for you, so they just might. They would. They just didn't know how to cook, so you you didn't half eat. And uh, you'd be hungry, sick, and it was kind of hard. It was kind of hard times. Kind of hard time. The, the boarding lady was not responsible for you. It was the teen. It was the the uh, older relatives that I was just too young to be there. I was too young to be there with those teenagers. That was in the 1930s. Somewhat like that, 1930s, early 1930s or something. So I think I, grad I graduated from eighth grade at Able Training School in 1938. That's when I left and went to Memphis to go to Booker T. Washington, which left to live with my aunt Ruth. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Booker T. Who were your friends? Oh, I had a lot of friends at Booker T. Washington. I, I, I remember some of them vaguely. The Weathers. Uh, what were um, I had a best friend across the street, Clementine Atkins, and I had uh, I didn't keep up with them too well. I didn't keep up with my my friends that, that was in Memphis. Time that Sister Ruth came and. You weren't supposed to be at a party? Was it a party? No, I never was supposed to. Well, she used to let me have parties at her house. In high school, different ones would have parties in, in, in their homes. And, mm -hmm. and she um, would take all the furniture out of her house, out of her living room, when it came time for me to host a party. And I would have, I would have a party, and she, she would have a band. She would hire a little band, a little uh, band for the party. And then the next next month or whatever the the party would be someplace else. So it was uh it was kinda of floating. Do you remember the, the name of the band? No. Local band? It was a local band, some musicians they knew. They, they would play. Well and tell me, what was life like living with mom and dad? Well, we we lived on a farm. We lived on a farm with my mom and dad, and uh, we had to depend on the crops, the first crops before before we could go to school. The first bale of cotton, you'd have to pick the first bale of cotton before you get money to get your school clothes. And of course, we we never we always had control of our farm. We never what you call share crop that worked on the third. We always had. Uh, full control of uh, of a crop. She didn't have to share. But by being two girls, my dad didn't have anybody to work for him because he had two lazy girls. That was me and my sister. We didn't like pick cotton. We didn't like chop cotton either. We stayed at home as much as we could. And it was hard for him to get hands to work for him because they said his, his old big girls were sitting up in the house and they weren't doing anything. And they weren't going over there and help. So it was quite difficult. So he would always have to hire somebody to to get his crops in for him. And we would we would pick cotton sometimes. We'd go out and pick sometimes, but we weren't really to be dependent. Um, we weren't. We didn't every day. We decided to stay at home and play. We did that. And what else did you all do growing up? Did, could you drive? Yeah, I did drove. he have a? Did he yeah, have I drove. a? Yeah, we had a car. We were one of the few that had had cars, and my dad let me drive 
we had Sunday school every other Sunday, every first and third Sunday, you'd have Sunday school at church. And he would let my sister and I drive the car to Sunday school. And he would tell us, stay on the dirt road, don't get on the highway. You can drive, but don't get on the highway. And I would be the one driving, so of course, when we, I left church, let's go up the highway. I did just the opposite of what he told me. I got on the highway showing off again, driving fast, going up the highway. And he never drove that car over 30 miles an hour, so the, the, gas, the gas pedal got stuck on me when I was trying to push it down and drive fast. And I couldn't, it couldn't get up, so I lost control of the car. My sister was down in the floor trying to pull it up with her hand, and I was, and I was trying to keep the car on the highway. So we ended up in over, over in the ditch, and uh, quite embarrassing because we had to, the little boys and things we were showing off. They had to come get us out of the ditch, and 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 uh, get us back on the road. So we finally got home. We got home. We was looking real soon. Dad said, "Where you?" Why are y'all looking so funny? Nothing. What, what, what did you do? Nothing. He said, y'all did something. He said, because cause I, know, I, I know that look. And we went on, we, we pulled the car, pulled the car up, in, up, in the, up the hill, parked it, and went in, in the house. So it was about a month later he found out that we were on the highway. So he didn't let us drive for quite some time after that. And then finally he let us, he started, he started letting us drive again. But that, he always wanted us to be independent. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't act right. He bought us a tennis net, put it up. We didn't like tennis. He wanted us to play tennis. He wanted us to ride pretty horses and things. We scared of horses. So we didn't do right. Oh. Wow. We used to have, well, when I was a child, when, when we were still living on Highway 19 in the big house, we had a large house with a, a great big front porch all the way across and a dormer up at the top where you could go upstairs and, and look out two little windows up there, two windows. And uh, we had an upstairs living quarters and a dining room and downstairs. And we also had one of those telephones on the wall where you ring and Central would say, uh, you talk to the operator, they call themselves Central at that time. And not too many people had telephones, especially black folk. But we had one on the wall. And um, so we we had we they would talk. I, we never talked to anybody, but uh, my mama would. She had somebody to talk to, but nothing but the store storekeeper. She would talk, and um, we um, also, of course, they didn't have too much entertainment. But they they used to have what they call moonlight picnics out there and they would hang hang jars oil oil put oil in jars and put rags and uh, some way they would fix it where they would act as lanterns and they would hang them in the tree and that would give light to the people who would come out of the town the town of Brownsville they would always come out what they call the moonlight picnic and they had barbecue and uh, and the Woodlawn, they had a band, they called the Woodlawn Band at that time. And, and they would sit on the front porch and play and the people would dance out in the yard, in the yard and and, uh, and they had a lot of clean fun. And people in town would look forward to that. They would look forward to going out to the Lay's house, out to the Lay's house for the moonlight picnic. And they, they would do that, I guess, about once a month. They would have these picnics. 
and it was hosted by uh, my dad and a few more of the men in the in the neighborhood, Archie Burnett, Frank Lee, Nelson Burnett, and there's some more people in the neighborhood. Of course, they they would always make us go to bed pretty early. We couldn't stay up. We couldn't stay up with them. We'd stay up until bedtime. And uh, and my grandmama would always, they would always have to play up religious song for her. They would always have to play when the saints go marching in for her. And and uh, she would have them to play when the saints go marching in. And then when the saints go, after the saints go marching in, my grandmama and us would go in the house and go to bed. And she, she didn't stay out there with them. Ooh, what? Your grandmother, what was her name? Eliza Lee. My grandmother was Eliza Lee. And your grandfather? They call him Bill Lee. Papa, Papa. Mm -hmm. His name was Bill William Lay. Mm -hmm. But her name, her name was Eliza Lay, and she, she was the first one that, the first first person that I ever learned about God. She sit by the fireplace and she would sing a little song, have to teach us a little song. Oh, I just can't think of a little song now, but uh. How they how they lived among me and when I can't think of it now. But anyway, we we would sing that little song every night. We sing that little song and then, and she would pray and, and you could just feel the spirit. It's just the spirit with us singing that song. That's the first time I ever had an encounter with uh, with the God with God. Uh, spirit was through her. And she she taught us. She taught my sister. She taught us this song. When Jesus was here among me, and I wish I could have been with him then. That was the song. I wish I could have been with him then. Wish I could have been with him then. And that's that's the song that she um, she taught us by that old big fireplace. And she would uh, bake potatoes under the ashes, under the hot ashes. She she put potatoes under the hot ashes and bake them. She'd take them out, and wash them off, and we would eat them. And then she would sing and read the scripture. Well, what was it like? living at home with mother and dad. My mother and dad? Mm-hmm. What did they do besides have that? What did they do? Well, my mother taught school. My, my mother was a school teacher. And uh, she, in turn, because of the distance of the schools, you could not commute daily. You had to live close to the school. So all during the week, she would live close, she would be away from home, close to the school, wherever she would teach. And of course, I, the, I would be with her. I, I, being the oldest, she would take me with her. We've been to several schools, several schools. And, um, and she had to, she had to live close, close to school. What would happen school. on Friday nights? Did you all have a television, a radio? Well, um, we were, when, when we moved to the Coleman place, we moved to the Coleman, not the Coleman place, when we moved down to Nutbush, that was in the 40s, my dad was one of the first to buy, to buy a TV. And he, um, uh, he put it in his living room, and on Friday nights it was just like a movie theater because all the, the, the close neighbors they would come and watch the and, and watch TV, watch the television, especially if they had a fight, if it was a fight with with one of the heavyweight champions or something, the living room would be full. And he was also he also before we moved to the. Um, 
uh, to Nut Bush when, when we were at the Coleman place. He surprised me once with a, a battery radio. He was one of the first to bring a radio, to buy a radio. So he he would come and pick me up from where I was going in, in town every Friday night. So this particular Friday night, he turned the radio on real, real, real low. And when I walked in the house, I said, what is that I hear? <clears throat> and it was sounding. I said, what is that? And he said, I don't know. Go see. And I went there and there was a, a radio sitting up there. A radio. But the radio ran by batteries. And we couldn't play it like all the time because Mama was always, she was always afraid that our batteries were going down. Well, I was just doing this and I remember I was going to throw away some paper clips and it reminded me of something my father said. He said, don't throw away anything that will take money to replace. If it takes money to replace it, don't throw it away. So I did. I kept the little, the little uh, uh, clips. I was going to throw them away, but I kept them.